Well, let's have a look at this uh, veteran Citroen car display. The double inverted V insignia on their on their uh, grill. And uh, yeah, these cars have two side mirrors. Whereas surprisingly, there are cars here with only one on the driver's side. There's a matching coloured uh, steering wheel, the spare wheel on the back. This car looks like the top comes off. I guess it requires two people. A rather large cabriolet, as the French call them. Plenty of back seat room. And a bulbous boot to incorporate the spare wheel. We have these very smart rear wheel external covers so there's more room in the boot. Just a close up look at the window there. And a little peek through the window inside. The then we have the spare wheel cover with uh, the mini ball bar. Presumably for rear end collisions and uh, reversing mishaps. And this car has uh, gone through some rough times and has a rear window that uh, perhaps has an escape hatch if the side doors don't open in a collision. Yep been through the mill that one. Now could be the early version of the Batmobile. How long is that rear overhang? The huge boot in the fin and the bulbous tail light in indicators. Not much room inside so your passengers have to ride in the boot and a very long bonnet, so I don't know about the wheel, the uh, full length of this car. And no Citroen insignia. Presuming that it may be one, but nothing obvious. Give me a close look at the chrome trim. A lot of work there. The roof line looks fairly ordinary with that rectangular windscreen. Here we have a long wheelbase car again, but how, so much interior room. Wow. You could have three lines of seats in this. But with two, there's massive leg room in the back. And uh, the bars across the back seat, I don't really understand. Maybe that's holding on, but also a bit dangerous for collision. Bang your head on that, ouch. So, the boot, there's not a lot of boot space, so uh, why not put a basket on the back? Just two straps. And I guess that folds you down when you open the boot. A lot of these cars must have been re-sprayed. Perhaps they, they did have different coloured wheels when they first came out. That car's obviously not big enough for the owner. There's a lot in that car. And this one needs a basket. Because the owner likes to carry a lot of things, apparently. 1.56 cylinder, it seems, on the sign. A lot of colours. Variations in lights, position of lights, and those tiny wipers. It's the only one uh, side mirror, and quite a few here. Here again, the wing on the back, and the bulbous tail lights.
and the running board in this case for, for a gangster gig. It's down on the outside of the car while it's moving. This has the doors opening from the back as we do these days but many have them opening from the front. Suicide doors as they have been called. Here's the official um, promo for the 20th rally with a picture of the Negresco Hotel, a famous hotel on the beachfront, getting spicked up even more, privately owned and worth an absolute mint. Not much room in the back there, but presumably those bars for the kids to hold on. Love this car. For a big car, I like the white walls and the wire wheels. Classy colour. Again, the bulbous boot. And the indicators on the side of the outside of the rear windows. And what looks like an upgraded uh, brake light warning system. The cars be coming from behind and this car is used for promo obviously and uh, is actually used for the Tour de France annual cycling race which begins in a week or two so a hailer at the front and two loud hailers at the back or maybe three the contrast in the wheel colour, the protection over the spare wheel, here with the badge, and some very classy trim. Either beautifully restored or maintained, not kept outside normally. How about this for a shake? It says 1968 there. So perhaps that's the year it came out or sometime between. Very small back window. <clears throat> and bigger lights. A little bigger. For tail and indicator and this reinforced bumper and a big boot with two handles That's the classy side wheel covers And a close-up look at the front. You see there's only... Oh no, there are two side mirrors on that car. And there are different heights. Here we are, close-up. It looks like a toothless shark mouth to me. And some have badges, one for the Automobile Club, and one for Monaco in this case. This time the basket and the external spare wheel, with four straps just to be extra well Securized. Well, 
plastic back window. Front opening doors with a step plate. So that's a non-slip non -slip one at that. Extra chrome trim along the door. Like a two-tone look on the body. It's a striking colour. A very simple uh, rear, rear bumper on this one. And a relative of the Batmobile, the bulbous lights and the fin, and the double boot, and no uh, handles on those lids, so presumably they have releases inside the car, cable release I guess. Huge overhang at the back, and just a very simple rear bumper for, uh, so as not to spoil the, uh, the curve, the visual appearance. And then, after a close-up of this window, you see the indicator lights on the outside of the window. We have the Bourgeois Citroën DS, short for D-double-E-double-S-E, -E, which stands for one word, D-double-E-double-S-E, -E, which stands for Goddess, DS, in French. Translation. Henri Chaperon, presumably the designer, and unlike the other cars, uncluttered in shape. A strikingly different look. Maybe a long version of a Carmen Gear almost, but don't mention that to the French. Rectangular review mirror but only one surprisingly for a relatively modern car compared to the others but a very big back window so that helps with uh, reversing and watching uh, watching out for motorbikes because that's the big thing in Europe you've got to be very watchful for uh, where they're coming from and scooters of course And the wipers at the bottom of the windscreen instead of from the top. And what year that is. But there is the.